Okay, the next step in our process is going to be to make certain that we have trunks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cheat. I'm going to take every interface on the switches except for the interfaces that are going down towards host 6 and host 5 on 9K3 and 9K4 and I'm just going to configure them to operate as, as trunks. Now again, show interface E1, well let's see, we'll look at 1, 1 which is the interface that's going to go between 3 and 4 and I say switch port and what we're going to see here is, is that they should be operating in a mode of access. Now access means they can only carry the traffic for one VLAN and that VLAN is VLAN 1 by default. Now in iOS we have a process referred to as dynamic trunking protocol which means some devices depending on their operational mode can dynamically form trunks. Nexus switches cannot do this. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to modify the behavior on a switch by switch basis. And again, I'm going to, to use a shortcut. I'm going to say interface Ethernet 1, 1, and we see it's 1, 2, I'm sorry, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, and 1, 5. So I'm going to take Ethernet 1, 1 through 5, and I am going to enter all of those at the same time. You'll notice I see a range output here. There is no range keyword in Nexus. Only specify the interfaces that you want. And if you want to see where and what you're doing, you could even execute the where command, which is going to show you what configurational context you're actually in. Because this tells me I'm in interface configuration range, but it doesn't tell me for what interfaces. So I could use the where command to verify that. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to say switch port, switch port mode trunk and because we only support 802.1q there's no need for me to do anything else I don't have to specify an encapsulation type all I'm going to do is I'm going to say no shut and then I'm just going to copy and paste this into the other devices show CLI history unformatted and I'll just grab that configuration right here and I shall shove that in each of these devices. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five for every switch. So we'll go to switch two and we will paste that in. We'll go to switch three and we will paste it in. I'll go ahead and just exit for clarity. And I'll go to switch four and do the exact same thing. Now, we see on this screen the previous output stated that this particular device on Ethernet 1.1, that's this link, we're on 9K4, that's this guy right here, and this is that interface that's pointing towards 9K3, we see that it was operating in an operational mode of access. Now what I want to do is I'm going to say end, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say show interface E11, and I'm going to say switch port one more time and what we should find is, is that its operational mode now should be a trunk and it only supports one particular encapsulation protocol which is 802.1Q as far as the encapsulation remember Nexus does not support the Cisco proprietary ISL in fact a lot of the modern enterprise level switches do not support dot anything other than dot one Q so what we're going to do is we're going to explore as exactly what happens in this process after we talk about the concept of spanning tree. So I'll see you in another demonstration after we go through the theory involving spanning tree and the operation of spanning tree. I'm Terry Vinson and I'd like to thank you for learning data center with me.